Story by Darth Vader. I'm a deep sea biologist who's currently working on a scientific research vessel out in the Pacific Ocean. I think we woke something up. Officially, we're out there on grant money, studying how the Pacific trash vortex is affecting, well, everything. The problem is, it's bigger. Bigger than you can imagine. Bigger, even, than I thought it'd be. It's not just regular trash, either. It's full of microplastics, insidious little arseholes that turn the water into this soupy goo that spans down far beneath the area we can measure. Unofficially, though, I think we're out here for more nefarious reasons. I don't think I'm allowed to tell you what I think. My team and I always joked about what we were really doing out here. We laughed about it being some grand conspiracy, especially since our work is in standard research and we haven't been given any real answers when we asked about it. My buddy, Delta, was certain we were searching for an undiscovered ancient city, but Echo disagreed. She said it was an asteroid, red UFO, that blasted into the watery depths long ago, and we were meant to recover it, or at the very least study it. And November, well, November is a dipshit, so we never really listened to him. What about that other lady with us? He'd ask. She always wears black, only ever talks to Echo, and refuses to tell us her name. What's she up to? Then he'd look around with raised eyebrows as if he'd figured it all out. But Echo would roll her eyes and say, For the billionth time, November, that lady is just another scientist who's helping out while doing her own research. She's just super shy and very, very protective of it. Truth be told, it didn't even dawn on me to seriously question anything until now. I figured we're all just a bit ship crazy, yearning for home, for vistas, plants, solid ground, fresh food, for things other than just endless nothingness of deep ocean and severe stagnation. I realize now I should have listened. It started three days ago. November found me in the belly of the vessel, working on packing crates into the compartment. He looked antsy, like he'd seen something he shouldn't have. What's up? He glanced around, making sure we were alone. We were. What? I was losing patience. November always found something to bother me about. Do you hear it? I paused, cocked my head to the left, threw a pensive look and said, Huh, that is weird. November looked at me eagerly, like I was carrying. You... you hear it too? Uh-huh, I said, tilting my head straight and smiling. Sounds like a goddamn ship engine to me. What's it sound like to you? November's face fell. You're such an asshole, he said, turning on his heel and skulking away. Hey, right back at you, buddy. Two hours after that, I was heading to the top when I heard a growl rise up from beneath me. My stomach. I hesitated, then figured it wasn't too late to grab something from the mess before turning in for the night. One grilled cheese and creamy basil tomato soup later, I was walking back when I saw something odd. It was Echo. She was standing on the starboard deck in the dead of night, alternating between looking up at the constellations and down at the ocean. Her hair was tied back, and the sea had sprayed the little fuzzies around her face stiff. Her cheeks were flushed. She looked excited. It wasn't common to see anyone above deck that late, so after my initial startle, I walked over. She didn't notice me at all. She just kept looking up and down, up and down. What you doing? I asked after standing silently beside her for over a minute. Shit! Oh. Hey, Charlie, I didn't see you. She laughed. It was tinny, like she was on edge. Sorry, what did you say? I almost threw some smart-ass quip back, but instead I shoveled my hands into my pockets and repeated, What are you doing? She cocked her head to the side, listening, then said, Do you hear that? Oh no, I said gravely. She looked at me with a hard, visible fear. Not you too. November was going on about some noise. Echo's face relaxed. The flush on her cheeks seemed to glow. Really? I nodded. So, you don't hear 
anything. I shook my head. Oh, huh. Guess that makes me feel better. Maybe it's nothing. Good night. She smiled, waved once, and walked away. Night, I said, and stood there for a few more minutes, staring out at the shadowy vastness. I got up at the ass crack of dawn the next day, ready to tackle, well, the tackle. We packed it all down inside the whole compartment, and it needed to be moved back up on deck. Delta was already there, and he'd moved all of zero crates by himself. Damn Adonis, that Delta. Hey, he said, nodding at me. Get some sleep? Some, I replied, rubbing my eyes and yawning. How about you? None. I stopped rubbing and opened my eyes. Delta was looking at me pensively, almost desperately. Oh, shit, I said, examining the work he had left to do. All of it. That really sucks, man. What's that goddamn noise? Delta said. He was still staring at me. I shot him a glance, unamused. Okay, I said. Are you guys trying to fuck with me or something? Delta raised his eyebrows. He was clearly confused. What? You, Echo, and November have all told me about this goddamn noise. What noise? I don't hear shit. They heard it too, Delta asked. I watched the look of worry on his face grow as I nodded. A beat passed. Then he took a deep breath and said, Just listen. So I did. For about five minutes... I was about to tell Delta to go fuck himself when there, just barely, on the very edge of my hearing, I heard something scrape the hull, lightly, lovingly. Then, immediately after that, there was a sick moaning sound, it sounded like a group of people, it sounded like they were in pain, or maybe it was pleasure, I couldn't tell, but there it was. That noise. Moaning. 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 Shit hit the fan five hours ago. It was Echo again, god damn it. I woke up abruptly, sure that someone had yelled straight into my ear. I sat up, scared and drenched in sweat, to an empty, dark cabin. I took a few breaths, trying to calm the fuck down. What I really needed was a walk. I knew something was wrong the instant I hit the deck. November was there, and Delta. Like me, both were still wearing their pajamas. They were staring open-mouthed at something on the railing. Their eyes met mine for a moment before turning back towards the starboard side. I followed their gaze. Echo was standing on the other side of the railing, one foot dangling over the open water. She was crying. I didn't do it. I, I didn't say anything. I didn't tell anyone. I, I can't do this anymore. Don't! was all I could say. Echo turned towards me. Her eyes were red, bulbous with fear. She shook her head. Let go. I screamed and ran over to the railing. Delta hot on my heels, we leaned over, trying to catch a glimpse of where she might be, when that sound rose up from underneath us. That moaning. Fucking moaning. It was loud. Echo resurfaced for a moment, filled by some thing, cyclopean, oil like, alive. As we watched, part of it rose up, wrapped around her, and dragged her down. The sound of her screams being swallowed by the sea is something that will haunt me until the day I die. I was yelling, leaning over the rail, trying to help, but it was far too late. She was gone. It happened so fast. The ocean calmed down and I saw that thing in its entirety for the first time. It was unusually shaped. Godlike. Part of it was glowing. Bioluminescent. It turned. And in its own light I saw a single cartoon-colored eye, intelligent and aware. It blinked and the iris went from deep green to a brilliant purple. His pupil gorged up, 
black hole-like, as if it was focused on us. Then, quick as a torpedo, it shot away. The ship keeled port side, stopped, then rocked back starboard. I yelled, off balance, and staggered back into Delta. He wrapped his arms around me and pulled me back down. Navona was crouched next to us, crying and whimpering some unintelligible gibberish about aliens and monsters and old sea lore. There was a yell, then boots on the deck, and the research head, Oscar, was there. The lady in black was right behind him. Oscar lifted up November by the arms. What? He asked, fear clear in his sharp voice. For God's sake, what happened? Oscar, November said, grasping onto his shoulders. She jumped, and... and something took her. Oscar shook him hard and said, Who jumped? Echo! Oscar looked over at Delta and me. His face seemed to be asking if this was just another one of odd dumb jokes. We said nothing and watched his face contort with fear as realization set in. When did this happen? What? Which way did it go? The woman in black asked, cutting Oscar off. We all looked at her sharply. Then I pointed in the direction it took off. East. Towards land. The woman nodded, turned to Oscar and said, Set a course. What? She's gone. Casualty of the ocean. I'm sorry. Set course. She turned to leave. Where are you going? Oscar asked. Without turning, the lady replied, I've got to make some calls. It's now days later and I still don't know how to feel. We never found Echo. She vanished without a trace. Woman overboard in rough seas. At least that's what went on the official record. Fuck the official record. Wrong course for California. I have a biting fear this isn't some proverbial white whale, a long-lost prehistoric monster. I think it's something else. From somewhere else. Maybe our trash stirred up the ocean, and woke some slumbering beast from the depths of it. Maybe we deserve it. At this point, all I can do is speculate. I went to Echo's cabin just to, I don't know, look around. The journal was on her bed. She must have been writing in it before she... Fuck. She tried to get me to pick up journaling I'll ask her about. She said that it stilled the waters of her mind and might help me too. She even bought me a neat waterproof notebook for this trip. I've never opened it though. Probably never will. Instead, here I am. Typing this out and sending it off into the void that is the internet. I guess I just have some sort of hope that someone will see this and get the word out. I don't know. And I'll just admit this now. I did flip through Echo's journal. I had to know. Most of the pages were torn out. Like she knew what was going to happen and didn't want anyone else to read them. Or maybe someone else came and took them. I really don't know. The last few pages were intact though and... Hard to read. It was just the same phrase over and over and over again. The abyss looks back. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. And if you're an animal lover like me, please consider donating to the World Land Trust, a charity that aims to help wildlife through buying land, preventing development, and helping endangered species.